Okay, the past couple days I came across two different videos that used the word mystery about something that was in the Egyptian desert. And that's the kind of thing we search out at the American Institute of Pyramid Research. So let's look at these two mysteries. The first from the Smithsonian Channel, uh, channel is one called the Mystery of the Lost Pyramid. So even the term lost pyramid has a mystery attached to it, but now we're adding the word mystery, so we've got this mysterious mystery of the lost pyramid. So we're going to look at that one. And the second mystery is from uh, Matt at Ancient Architects, and he put out a video of the mysterious staircase in the Egyptian desert. Okay, let's start with the lost pyramid. Uh, we find out in watching the Smithsonian video, this is near a quarry in Dashur, southeast of the Bent Pyramid. So Dr. Chris Naughton is uh, featured in this uh, Smithsonian visio, uh, video about the Lost Pyramid. So you can see Chris is pointing to the pyramids at Dashur in the foreground, uh, the Bent Pyramid, and in the distance beyond it, the Red Pyramid, two large pyramids that uh, Pharaoh Sneferu built. And so in a quarry to the southeast of the Bent Pyramid, they found these uh, limestone blocks, which were very regularly cut in what appeared to be a pyramid. And sure enough, they found a sealed pyramid. So here, uh, Dr. Naughton's looking at this, this block that seals off the entrance, and they thought, wow, if we can get that thing out of there, we have the hope of getting an undisturbed treasure. And so antiquities uh, tooled up, and they came out there, and they, they set up the, the scaffolding, and then they got the uh, pulleys going, and through you know modern technology, which is basically the same kind of technology that the ancient Egyptians used, they raised that stone out of there. So they shine the light down there, and oh, what's there? You know, what kind of gold, silver? Oh, so disappointing. How did a robber beat them to that? You saw the effort they went to to unseal this thing. There doesn't seem to be any other entrance down there. What's going on? Now, Dr. Chris Naughton says that's, that's a great question. So what, what can I bring, what tools can I bring to, the, uh, to this mystery here? And so I, I like to look at the pointings. Uh, you know, I, I look at myself as an independent researcher, as a speculator, making the analogy to the market, as I talked about in my last video. You know, hedgers, that's the forensic scientists who are archaeologists that do the spade work, shovel by shovel, sifting through evidence. And I'm a speculator, and I, I bring bigger ideas to this. And between the two of us, I think truth can derive. So there's the lost pyramid down there at the lower part of the street, screen. You can see that. And so I was experimenting with where does this thing point? So I took a line through the red pyramid. You can see I've got the red, you know, box around it there and it hits the southwest corner. So the line from that that uh, lost pyramid down there in the quarry uh, southeast of the bent pyramid, if you go through the southwest corner of the red pyramid, it goes directly to the northeast corner of Khufu, the great pyramid. Now this doesn't seem to be by chance. So there, there's an indication there. The lost pyramid is pointing to the northeast corner of Khufu, which is such a significant corner. So I would say there's something to be found here. It could be that it's saying that the, the lost pyramid was, you know, one of Sneferu's, and since he knew his son Khufu was going to build the Great Pyramid at that point, he was trying to show off and point to where a pyramid that had not yet been built would be built. But more likely, this lost pyramid is from the, you know, Amenhepet, or uh, the time of the 12th dynasty. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, it would just indicate that well, we know where the Red Pyramid is, we know where the Great Pyramid is, and we're just showing by the way we, we placed our, our uh, pyramid, we're, we're in harmony with these great giants. So it, it could mean something like that. You know, you can see two lines from the, from the southern part of the, the picture here. Uh, I've got one line that goes from the Bent Pyramid through the Red Pyramid, and it's gold, and it points to the north. We're going to look at that one. But the blue line is the one that I showed you that goes from the, the, the uh, Lost Pyramid, through the Red Pyramid up to the Great Pyramid. Okay, so here's the, the uh, gold line there. This, If you take a line from the Bent Pyramid and go directly through the Red Pyramid, it goes exactly to the Sun Temple of Nusara in Abu Ghraib. And so I was there recently here with Will Wire. We're standing on the, the altar that's in front of the, the pyramid, which is there, which held an obelisk. And so, uh, you know, that's incredible, the fact that the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid point directly to this. And, and Robert Grant says the obelisk that was on top of that pyramid uh, was 432 feet high. Would it would have made it the largest obelisk in Egypt. So here's the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid, two huge pyramids built by Sneferu, pointing to what would have been the largest obelisk in Egypt. Okay, interesting. Interesting. 
Okay, so that's an incredible connection, I'd say. The Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, you know, pointing to uh, uh, the Sun Temple of Nusera, and then also this Mystery Pyramid pointing to the northeast corner of Khufu. Something to learn there. Let's look at the second mystery now, the one from ancient architects, this mysterious staircase in the Egyptian desert. So you got, you know, some uh, big YouTube channels weighing in in the comments. Ben from Ard Charlex, you know, talks about it. Chuck talks about it. And then somebody mentions Jimmy from Bright Insight, who's, you know, in Egypt just about now. You know, get on this. Uh, so I weighed in, too. And uh, I said, as you can see here, uh, I'll figure this out, Matt, I said. And so his reply to me was, okay, we have the location. Get on it, Larry. And he says, what's it pointing at? So I took that as my assignment to... Uh, you know, Matt from Ancient Architects who made the video about this mysterious staircase that goes deep, deep, deep down. And what's down there? There's water down there. There's water down there. And so whatever else there is, there's water. And I think that's significant here because as, as Matt uh, began to look for more information about this mysterious slice in the desert, he found this video by Antoine Gigal. And uh, I, I know Ant Antoine, we correspond. Uh, Matt had trouble getting any answers from her, but he did ask her a few things. Here she is, and uh, she does stuff all over Egypt. But, uh, you know, uh, th th initially this uh, was brought to Matt's attention through a, a mystery history video that was done about this, this, you know, deep cut into the earth. And then uh, Antoine Gigal, he found her video, and she shows the, you know, the very perfectly cut sides. And, you know, how do they do that? Okay. But what I'm saying is, it goes down to water. It seems to me to be indicating, okay, something about water. So here it is. Here's a view from the top. If you're looking at Google Earth, go to Dome International School, and you'll be able to see that slice. It's up near Abu Wash. It's a military zone, so don't try and go in there. Um, okay, so there it is. You can see it. Okay, so what I did is I put the tools on it. Okay, so let's let's see what angle it's at. You know, it's about 62 degrees, so let's follow it. And when you do, where does it point? Matt's asking me, where does it point? Matt, Here's where it points. I'm glad you asked. It points to, look at the red line, the Fayum Oasis. It goes right down to the Fayum Oasis, the, the yellow line there. So the Fayum Oasis, interesting, because that raises, uh, you know, you start from, from where it points. It's plainly pointing. Just follow it down. And so interesting, Matt, you did a program about the missing pyramids of Lake Morris. Lake Morris is, is the Fayum Oasis that was called Lake Morris in the past. And so, you know, Herodotus says there were these two huge pyramids there, rivaling the side of the Great Pyramid. And they had these statues at the top, probably placed there later, uh, you know, by a pharaoh from the 12th dynasty. And so, uh, Matt Simpson, ancient architect, says that this is the site of where those, what where the obelisks, or those pyramids were. And he says that the Egyptian government antiquities would probably find some great things if they did some excavating here. So the, uh, the, the channel of Joseph is, was built there. So again, you've got this water, the idea of water. And of course, Lake Morris, uh, it was said uh, that fueled Giza. You know, there are those that said the water that was used, like there's this well shaft outside of the Great Pyramid, and then there was supposedly this water, uh, there was this this wall around the pyramid, and the, that water would have been too high for the Nile to flow in there, but it's downhill from, from Lake Morris. So there could have been this water from Lake Morris, the Fayum Oasis now, that came into Giza and probably could have gone up to Abru Wash, which is a little bit farther to the north, I think maybe, you know, five, six kilometers north of here. Okay, and some say it was even there was an, even an underground outlet for that because the Fayum Oasis is like that clover-like thing coming off the Nile to the right there. But there's uh, you know some people have said it came from the Atlantic Ocean. That seems too incredible to come from Libya, but I'm just saying it's more talk about water. Okay, so again, here's here's our cutting. It's pointing to Fayum, you know, a place of water that supposedly fueled. The, uh, the Great Pyramid, you know, in the water that was used uh, in, in uh, possibly bringing blocks into the pyramid to make it easier than using a bunch of ramps. And so uh, the, 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 this points to the Fayum Oasis, which sent water back here, theoretically. So I'm just going to end with uh, this picture that I, I took uh, last week at the Great Pyramid from the east side, you see this crack going into the east side of the Great Pyramid. And the block structure there is different than other places. 
And so my engineer, uh, the AIP engineer, Bob Crowley, and I have looked at several places on the east side, and it seems to us that there's indication that there could have been entries into the pyramid. It's possible that barges could have been brought directly into the pyramid to some kind of water elevators. And so again, I'm the speculator here. I'm just simply saying that that cutting, Matt, that you asked about up near Abu Wash, where does it point? It points to the Fayum Oasis, and there's water at the bottom of that cutting. And so this whole question of did the ancient Egyptians leverage water in building the Great Pyramid? I just heard Dr. Mark Lehner uh, give a private lecture last week about the uh, harbors that, that Khufu's architect Ankaf built you know, that brought, that, that brought the Nile almost all the way up to the pyramids. So, did water build the Great Pyramid? Is that mysterious shaft in Abu Rawash telling us something about the leveraging of water? Stay tuned.